Hello to my wonderful constituents in 8th District and beyond all of our friends across Maryland and even across America who like to tune in with us uh, for our weekly roundtable. We're talking about food this week and we're talking about how COVID-19 has um, put different kinds of stresses on our local food systems and what our um, great foodies are doing to respond to the crisis. So. Um, we're here with uh, Jackie DiCarlo, who is the CEO of MANA, and Lauren Goldberg, who is the executive director of the Crossroads Community Food Network in Tacoma Park. It is Tacoma Park. Was it Silver Spring? Or yep, it's Tacoma right there. Crossroads. Yep. Tacoma Crossroads. And then um, Tom Farquhar, who um, is with Sandy Spring Gardens um, and is a real life farmer. and delivers food to the people. So Jackie, let's start with you. Tell us um, how COVID has affected the local food situation. I was just talking to one of your big volunteers, Beth Taylor, who was telling me it's her sense that there is uh, a great growth in demand for food from people who now suddenly are not able to support their families. So is that going on? And then what's happening on the supply side? Yeah, well, thank you for this chance uh, to talk to you, um, Representative Raskin. I do want to just point out that you, in the height of all this, you reached out to me personally by cell phone and checked on us, and we really appreciate it because MANA has been on the front line since the, the stay-at-home order, and what we've really been dealing with is the fact that um, there's the uh, the pressures and the concerns of COVID, but then also uh, the resulting economic result recession left lots of folks who didn't have enough um, to make ends meet and didn't know where their next meal was coming from. So our volunteer Beth is correct. We had an increase of um, about 40%. So typically about 700 people, households turn to us every week and that's now up to a thousand. And wow. similarly, we used to every Friday and with a great partnership with um, Montgomery County Public Schools, we would give 8,000, I'm sorry, 3,000 um, weekend bags so that kids who were receiving free and reduced meals would have uh, food over the weekend. That We are now distributing 7,000 bags. We've also tried to um, make sure that people who need to stay put um, and, and who are uh, compromised medically or seniors or just trying to do the right thing and stay home, um, can get home delivery. So we've um, gotten up to about 800 home deliveries, which is something we've never done before. We've done it all safely with physical distancing. So we've changed from a choice model where people shop for their food, and now we do more like a drive-through. And um, all of that is possible because uh, donors have stepped up. Um, the, it, it's just been so gratifying because the supply chain that you asked about, even though there are great um, farmers like Tom and farmers markets like Crossroads, the, there's no doubt that the um, surplus that we used to get of donations has totally dried up and the supply chain itself has been constricted. So we've had to purchase food, order way months in advance, and it's taken real dollars to do that. And then in all of this distribution, we've had to um, really increase our, our people power and that's why volunteers like Beth are so important. Let me ask you another question, which is about the size of Montgomery County. Did you operate just in Montgomery in Manor? That's true. Okay, but Montgomery is one of the largest counties in America. It's just vast, vast yes. territory. And there's more than a million people who live in Montgomery now. So how are you able to cover the, the demand that pops up in so many different places all over the place? Yeah, so it's been a combination of things. Typically, we do have daily distribution sites and partnerships with groups like Clifton Park Baptist Church, kind of in Lawrence neighborhood. But um, what we've done here is we've kept those sites, we've added to the, the days that we're serving. Um, so they're in key regions of the county. And then also, even though the schools have closed, we have a grab and go distribution at certain uh, elementary schools. And then finally, those home deliveries are done by um, food runners, volunteers, and we cluster them. So they pick up food either at our warehouse in Gaithersburg or our market in Silver Spring, and then they make the, um, the, the deliveries, and it's all done by a technology called Chow Match. So it's kind of like Uber, but for volunteers who are helping keep people well-fed during COVID. 
Fantastic. Well, I'm, I continue to marvel at the work that you do and uh, Mana is uh, just a treasure in uh, Montgomery County. So thank you for what you've thank been you. up to. Um, let me turn to Lauren. Um, Lauren, not everybody has been to the great uh, Crossroads um, market and we hope we get you some new customers today. I always love coming over there. Tell us how you've been affected by the crisis and what are the, the masking and social distancing protocols that you've, observed, you've been observing there as you tell people about what goes on? Sure, well, um, thank you for the opportunity to share about Crossroads Farmer's Market. And um, I know that you've been a big supporter uh, in the past and have come out and visited in um, uh, pre-pandemic time. So thank you very much for that, uh, that support. Um, so yeah, for those who don't know, the Crossroads Farmers Market was founded in 2007 to find out if we make fresh fruits and vegetables more affordable, will people buy them? Um, when, the, when the market first started, it was a radical experiment and nobody knew if people would come to use their federal benefits to buy fruit and vegetables. Um, we were the first market in the state of Maryland to try this out. And the answer was yes, they did and continue to do uh, come to the farmer's market to use SNAP benefits, WIC benefits, and senior farmer's market nutrition program vouchers to buy produce. Um, and so what do we do that makes the produce more affordable is we secure grant funding to match people's federal benefits dollar for dollar. So that first year, uh, people, there were 100 people that came out to the market and spent about $7,000 worth of their federal benefits, and we matched it with an additional $7,000. Um, last year, over 4,000 people came to the market and purchased over $50,000 worth, and we worked with partner organizations to match and distribute over $80,000 additionally for people to use on fresh produce. Um, now, because people here in Montgomery County came out to the farmer's market and because we proved that this model could work, it has been replicated at hundreds of markets throughout the country. Um, I will say you don't have to use SNAP, WIC, or, or senior vouchers to be able to shop at the market. Um, our vendors take cold hard cash and debit and credit cards as well. Um, and as you representative have seen many times when you've been to the market, over a thousand people come um, on a weekly basis at, during the height of the summer. Um, and that was, of course, pre-COVID. Uh, so we fast forward to April 2020, and um, we're so grateful that Governor Hogan and folks in his office declared farmers markets to be the essential feeding operations that we know they are. Um, mm -hmm. And once we found out that we could be open, we knew that we would be and that we were committed to showing up and letting people know that we're still a consistent presence. Um, at the corner of University Boulevard and Ann Street in, to, in Tacoma Park. Um, so the market looks very different. We don't have children's activities. We don't have Zumba. We don't have benches. Um, we don't have field trips from elementary school students. Um, but we do have uh, hand washing stations um, at entrances and exits. We do have um, free masks that have been donated to the organization that we can provide if um, on the outside chance there are a few people that are coming without masks and we either ask them to leave or we provide them with a free mask. Um, the vendors are constantly ex um, being creative and figuring out new ways to um, manage the traffic flow within their tents and in their areas and we've got volunteers who mark out on the sidewalks the six feet um, spots to wait in line to, to be able to buy produce. Um, so we are grateful to be open and we're grateful to the support of the uh, customers who are coming. It, as you can imagine, it, attendance is, is down, way down. Um, but we, uh, in June, WIC benefits came out and in July, a pandemic EBT cards came out. And so we are seeing, yeah. we're seeing a huge increase in uh, attendance um, more recently. Um, Lauren, so when I've come, well, one thing I've always loved about Crossroads is you can both buy groceries, fruits and vegetables and uh, organically grown stuff around here, homegrown stuff, you know, nearby farms. But also there are people making stuff that you can eat right on the spot, which is great for people like me who have no willpower. And so like the empanadas and is all that stuff still there? Can you still go and have lunch? We have three vendors who are making prepared foods. They are, yeah. but 
there's no one is allowed to eat on site. So everything is uh, to go. Okay. And, so you can uh, sort of eat it walking back to your house or your car or whatever. So. I mean, we prefer <laughs> you don't do that. We prefer you wait till you get out of the market to start. To I got start. you. Okay. Well, look, um, thank you for adjusting and accommodating to the demands of the time. And thanks for being brave and staying open and staying healthy and staying safe and showing us how it's done. Tom, let's turn to you uh, as our farmer on the panel um, with Sandy Spring Gardens. To tell us how you've experienced this whole period and what you're seeing. You got to unmute if you would. We're trying to adjust to the new reality. There are, uh, it's a dynamic situation. It evolves month by month. Uh, our first setback was that we have two weekly, uh, for two years we've had two weekly markets at large office buildings uh, associated with the Kaiser Permanente. And those markets have closed uh, because the headquarters in Rockville is not uh, you know, full of employees and the medical center in Gaithersburg is more of a doctor's appointment online kind of situation. So uh, that's been a setback to lose two of our four weekly markets. Uh, then uh, the only market, which is a Sunday morning market, is still quite active, like the Crossroads market, uh, with a little different dynamic. We don't have the bustling scene that we have been used to in past years. Uh, social distancing changes the dynamics a little bit. I'm always stuck in a situation where a customer wants to uh, stand and chat with me at the stand, and I've got three or four customers waiting back six feet and 12 feet and 18 feet uh, who want to get to the stand to really see what's there, and they can't get there while we're having our typical farmer's market conversation between customer and farmer there at the stand. So I sometimes have to kind of brush them away and say, let the next folks come on in and let the line move up. Uh, we uh, have seen, uh, I, I would say, lower uh, participation in the market, but a higher average order. Uh, in other words, the people who are still coming to the farmer's market are using the farmer's market for the preponderance of their uh, uh, home uh, produce shopping. And we think that the quality of supply chain issues with the grocery stores have had a negative impact on grocery store quality. We're there, of course, to fill a gap then for families that want the very best local, fresh, organically grown uh, materials. <clears throat> and we think, you know, we've got a pretty high quality product and people, when they experience that, they want more of it, they come back. So we're, we're building a kind of very solid, loyal customer base of people who appreciate what we do, enjoy receiving this quality of product. In fact, we've had to increase our planting in some areas of products that have been going especially fast. We, we planned for a big uh, potato harvest this year and the potato harvest began a month ago. Uh, we've sold several thousand pounds of potatoes and a lot of that is sold wholesale to organizations that are part of the food security system that has come into place partly through federal, state, and local grants that have made it possible for churches and other organizations, including MANA to step up to this new challenge. And we are a supplier to those programs as well. So that's kind of working for us and offsetting the loss that we had in the two markets that went away. Well, I just want you to know that, you know, whenever um, we are doing the appropriations process or we're doing the agriculture bill, I'm always having you guys in mind and therefore fighting for um, assistance um, to the uh, local food markets uh, the farmers markets to make sure that people can use their SNAP benefits in that way um, and other kinds of benefits that people get. And I'm always thinking um, about strengthening our local food systems and the CARES Act definitely had a lot of provisions to try to promote food security. And I've always worked to see that our little fair share of the resources nationally come back to Maryland and get to Montgomery County and Frederick County and Carroll County. So. Um, I'm always inspired by what you guys do. And uh, I wanna thank you for being out there on the front lines of this crisis and um, cushioning the blow for people and making sure that people have access to good, healthy nutrition all of the time. So um, thank, thank you all for what you're doing and thanks for participating in our round table this week. And um, if each of you would just tell everybody how to get in touch with you if they want to maybe uh, that would be a nice way to say farewell. Jackie, if you'd start, that'd be great. Sure. Um, folks can reach us through manafood.org. We also have a presence on Facebook and Twitter, but I'll take my time to also thank you for the work that you did on the CARES Act as well as the HEROES Act. And I hope your constituents will tell our senators to support the HEROES Act so that we can continue these important federal programs that have made um, food assistance so possible. 
Thank you, Jackie. We are fighting real hard for the HEROES Act, and you're a hero too. Lauren, uh, tell people how to get in touch. Well, um, I also want to echo Jackie's Jackie sentiments and um, and thank you so much for the for the work that you're doing. Um, so you can reach us at crossroadscommunityfoodnetwork.org. Uh, my email address is lgoldberg at crossroadscommunityfoodnetwork.org. And um, we, our farmer's market is open every Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And University Boulevard and Anthony with the Mega Market Shopping Plaza. That's really next to so I encourage everybody to come out with your mask and um, come in and see what we've got to offer. There's amazing um, vendors and farmers um, from around the area who have uh, wonderful produce and, and food to, to offer. Well, thank you, Lauren. And I, I long for the day when we get back up in full force over there in the You've got the jugglers and the clowns and the politicians and the farmers and the empanadas and everything. So, Tom, how about you? How can people get in touch? Sometimes the farmers and the clowns are the same people, but we'll just leave, leave that. <laughs> we'll throw the politicians in there, too. Yeah, get in touch with us at www.sandyspringgardens.farm, unusual extension.farm. And you can find our online store there. The online store has been an important part of our program this year. People are getting home delivery. We deliver to a retirement community. We deliver to Leisure World every Friday. And uh, people can shop online. In fact, those orders are coming in now and we'll be delivering tomorrow. I want to give a shout out to MANA. We have a uh, we make donations to MANA. We also have a contract with MANA for uh, some of our products to go directly into their food system. And Jackie, we really appreciate MANA's support with your Farm to Food Bank program. Uh, which we're a proud participant in, and we hope with the HEROES Act, uh, we can even be more involved as the year continues. All right, well, um, all of you guys are uh, part of a food system that makes our community great, that is committed to feeding everybody. And so I'm just so honored um, that you join me today and thank you for the amazing work that you're doing. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Thanks.